See, this kind of barking right here is not the I have to go potty kind of barking. Today's episode is all about potty training your puppy. I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Today's potty training video is unlike any potty training video we've ever done, because we're in the thick of it right now. She's been the biggest challenge I've had on potty training in years. Potty training with Kona started off really well, but then it started to get out of control. I'm talking about multiple potty accidents inside the house during the day, and that is not a good sign here, especially if you're a professional dog trainer. So we're putting things back into gear. Now potty training this puppy is my main mission in life. And I'm telling you guys, never underestimate a dog trainer who's determined to potty train a dog. I'm pulling out all of the stops. I'm gonna cover everything that's working. I'm gonna focus on what's not working and I'm going to show you how we troubleshoot potty training relapses like we're having with Kona. I mean, how many of you deal with that? You know, you have a couple of days of success with your puppy. You start getting a little confident, maybe a little cocky about it. And then before you know it, your dog is having potty accidents everywhere. That's exactly what has happened to me. I admit it, I'm not perfect, but what I will say is that we're going to fix it. One more thing that I hope to add to our potty training regimen today is teaching her how to ring a bell in order to go outside. And I'll explain why that can be beneficial and why you can't totally rely on that. All right, let's review everything we've done so far. Honestly, the bottom line to potty training a dog is controlling their environment where they can and can't go and letting them outside often. Naturally, that is much easier said than done. I mean, what do you do if you live in a multi-dog household and the dogs are playing together? You don't always want to have them put up. Now you might remember a few lessons ago I updated you on potty training and part of the reason that I think we've had some setbacks on house training is because I've been prioritizing socializing her with my dog inertia in particular, giving her tons of playtime with inertia. The two main times that I'm experiencing accidents or when I give her social time with inertia, which is so important. I mean, a 13 week old dog like Kona needs those social skills and to interact with the dog. So to me, that was like the most important thing of all. And of course, sometimes when we're filming these videos, ironically enough, we'll get focused on filming for 45 minutes at a time, maybe an hour and a half in some occasions, and I forget to take her out and she has an accident. So it's all completely my fault. I wanna be clear about that. And that's true with you guys too, if your dog is having an accident. We have to take accountability and understand it's our responsibility to show our dogs where they can and can't do their business. So I believe we've identified the main issues here and we've buttoned those up. So now when I'm gonna let her play with inertia and have playtime in the house, I've been tethering her out on this. It's been working out really well. It also allows inertia to retreat and get some space from the hyper puppy sometimes. But this also gives Kona plenty of room to kind of uh, walk around and still experience some freedom when I'm not in a position to just completely watch her like a hawk and make sure that she's behaving appropriately. It's a great way to supplement controlling the environment. It's one of many ways. And sometimes you might notice here how she was chewing on the lead. I don't like that. So what I'll often do is give her something else to chew on. After all, she is a teething puppy. So we wanna make sure that she has plenty of good chews. That's a beef tendon chew right there. Even though I don't intend for any indoor potty occurrences to happen at all, perfection is obviously impossible. So just in case I'm getting too carried away on YouTube or Instagram and not paying attention, she's within range to come over here and go potty on these pads. I like pad training for a variety of reasons, not just for this. I like them for people who live in apartments where it's difficult to take a dog out. In the South, we have hurricanes all the time, so it's nice to have an alternative for a dog to relieve themselves indoors. So don't think that your dog can only learn to go on grass or potty pads. They can definitely learn both. I've also had the Furbo dog camera set up right here 
Not only has it helped me with potty training, but it's also helped me manage her separation anxiety, which those of you following the series will know has been her number one issue actually that I've been focused on. So this has been coming in so handy with Kona's training. The Furbo is a pretty genius product because it doesn't just notify you when your dog is barking. It'll notify you if they're howling or making any number of vocalizations or whether or not the barking has been continuous. And I can actually check in and see, okay, what kind of barking is this? Is this the kind of barking where she's saying, hey, let me out of here right now, even though I don't have to pee or anything. And also when she is quiet and behaving appropriately, I can actually give her treats from anywhere in the world. I mean, you could essentially crate train your dog without touching a treat or even being in the same country if you had to. This is amazing. I'll have a link in the description where you can get your Furbo. Great product, I know you'll love it. See, this kind of barking right here is not the I have to go potty kind of barking. This is the kind of barking that's saying, hey, I want to be let out right now. Let me out of here. And I have to be very delicate about the times that I let her out of the crate because we are dealing with separation anxiety and I don't want her to think that this type of barking works for her. So I want to wait for her to be quiet for several seconds before I let her out. Relax, good girl, relax. Yes, I said yes, I need to provide a positive outcome. Okay, that positive outcome is now getting to come out, but only during moments of quiet there. But she's actually doing really well. That was a rare outburst, ouch! You bite too much. One of the questions I've often asked is, can you teach a dog to ring a bell in order to be let outside. That way they can at least signal to you, hey, I wanna go out there because I gotta go pee. I first wanna set the bells down on the ground rather than just putting them up on the door just to get her comfortable. It's not out of the realm of possibility that some dogs might get nervous of that sound. So we wanna get her, there you go, comfortable just by saying, hey, you can investigate that. I'll give you a treat when you do it. There you go, she even touched it right there. All right, let me see here. So far, so good. I'm gonna pick him up here, see if we can get her to interact with him in any way. Let's see, can you shake? Sometimes she'll use her paw naturally. Yes, good, I like that. I don't know if we're, yes, I like that she nudged it with her nose there as well. Just anything we can do to get her to touch those bells. Let me set him back down, let her think. Yes, even though it was an accident, I'm still gonna go and acknowledge that. Yes, even though she just nudged it with her nose there, didn't make much of a sound, going to acknowledge it. Some of the coolest things that you teach your dog are taught by accident at first. What's this? Get it. Yes, right there. So I'm really, I'm just trying to get her comfortable making contact with the bells and then we can go to the next level. Here. Yes. That was very deliberate, that one. Did you see that? Yes. Yes. Let's see if I can get one more nudge and we're gonna move on. Yes, there it is. Now, you might remember, we've talked about various ways to reward a dog. We've talked about rewarding them with food when they do something great, like sit, good. We might reward them with a toy, go get it. Just a few seconds can be good. But the third type of reward is just access to a desirable environment. And you might realize this, but many dogs, if not most dogs, really love to go outside. Kona, come. Good job, very good. So I'm gonna use a combination probably of treats and access to the outside, maybe even play. Maybe I'll just use all three when teaching this. Let's see if we can just get her into a groove here of tapping the... Yes, accident, but that's okay. Yes, interesting. Try to go down this road for a second. Yes. So kind of by putting a treat in my hand here, getting her to inadvertently make contact with the bells, that seems to be getting her comfortable with touching them. Come here. Yeah, very good. Yes. Okay. Come on, let's go, go out there. Good job. You wanna come back in? Okay, come on. And right now I'm really stuck at having to hold the treat over here to get her to kind of inadvertently make contact with the bells. So I'm trying to create some, yes, right there. There we go. My hand was nowhere near and she touched it. Can you shake? 
Yes! I like that she pawed. Paws up. Yes! <laughs> She's doing everything but touching the bells. Yes, good! There we go. I'll take that. Here, get it. Yes! We can deal with jumping up on the window at another time. Come on. Yes, nice work. And we're gonna open the door every time she hits that from this point forward to let her know touching the bell means outside. Good girl. Do you wanna jump up? Yes, good. Yes, come on, go get it, let's go. Give her some play time out here. I want her to know that outside is a wonderful place. Playing occurs here, going potty occurs here, just lots of good stuff. I will say that ultimately, of course, it is our responsibility to let our dogs out. We shouldn't have to rely on them to let us know when they have to go out. Yes, ha <laughs> ha, for a potty training video, it's working. But as I said before, really communicating with your dog and showing them how to communicate with you can only help you in the long run. Of course, as you get to know your dog and your dog gets to know that you actually want them to go potty out there instead of inside, it'll be easier for you to notice when they're asking to go out. That's one of the benefits perhaps of teaching your dog how to ring a bell as well. And since this is obviously a potty training video, I wanna give you guys some advice on things I've learned about house training a dog over the years. Many of them I have learned the hard way. It's been my experience over the years that many clients are under the impression that dogs can be potty trained in just a week or two, but in reality, it does take longer than that, especially if you're talking about a puppy. Potty training, probably more than anything else, takes tons of consistency, months of relentless consistency. Now, it's really normal for dogs to start catching on within just a few weeks. In fact, you can probably get 80% there in pretty short order if you're consistent, but it is that last 20% that can really get out of control if you let your guard down. As we've seen with Kona, relapses are probably a lot more common than you realize. When your dog does have an accident, we don't want to get mad at them. We don't want to scold them or punish them. I mean, they're just doing what nature requires of them, right? How are they supposed to know that it's not okay to go on the tile floor on here, but it is okay to go on the grass out here? It's on us to teach them that. You've probably heard of people rubbing their dog's nose in their mess to try and communicate to them, hey, don't do that. It's pretty counterproductive. Don't do it. And if you're finding that accidents are occurring at an increasing rate in the house, that means you probably need to do some soul searching here and make sure that you're really doing the best job possible at controlling the environment. Are you tying the leash to you when you are in the house and doing dishes and having your dog outside of the crate? Are you paying attention to them? Are you making sure that their environment is controlled at all times or that you're supervising them very strictly when they are not in a highly controlled environmental situation? The bottom line is that the closer to 100% of the time that you can get at controlling their surroundings, the more successful you're gonna be and quicker too. And remember, dogs never pee and poop in the house because they're mad at you or trying to get back at you or trying to prove a point of some kind. They just really have to go potty and they don't know where to go yet. And that's okay because both of us, you and me, are going to become perfect potty trainers now because we know all of this. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. Stay tuned. To give you every advantage possible, check out Furbo. Follow us on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up with everything dog training. And if you really want to get everything I know about dog training in your brain, read both of my books. I will have all of those links in the description below. See you guys in the next video. Good job, girl.